On May 2, 1945, the Soviet Union finally invaded Berlin, definitively defeating Germany. Once they succeeded in the fall of Berlin, the soldiers of the Soviet army received special permission from their leader Joseph Stalin. As a privilege for having one, they were authorized to send a package of up to 5 kilos to their home, without restrictions, so the soldiers sent literally anything, the terrible thing was that everything was the product of systematic and uncontrolled looting. But the truth is that the permission received went beyond the objects obtained from the theft of the defeated of the war, and it was a tragedy that the Soviet Union has never taken care of. In just a few weeks, around 2 million German women were massively and systematically sexually assaulted by members of the Red Army, to whom Stalin had given the green light by stating that, after such a tough campaign, soldiers had the right to entertain themselves with women. Although to a much lesser extent, other Allied armies, such as the French or the American, also participated in the barbarism, but above all they contributed to it with their silence. In this video we are going to share the most heartbreaking testimonies and situations that the victims of these atrocities had to go through. When the armies of the Allies and the Red Army managed to defeat the forces of the Third Reich, bringing about the fall of the resistance in Berlin, everyone thought that the horrors of war were over, but for the German survivors, the nightmare was only to begin. German women were one of the most precious spoils of war, which the victors disputed, so Berlin became a hunting ground for women. Adolescents, adults, old, strong or sick, all the women were subjugated by soldiers who euphorically celebrated each of these violent abuses, regardless of the age of the victims, who ranged from 12-year-old girls to 70-year-old women. Here is a testimony from one of the survivors. And that's when I saw my first Russian soldier be all. The little Mongolian, even we had May, with their fur caps down, okay? And then they came downstairs to the basement, putting this cardboard on the table, telling the people in Berlin, Väterchen Stalin gave his troops the right to rape, to steal, to kill, to do whatever they want to do. And believe me, they did. According to historian William Hitchcock, most were repeatedly abused, some suffering up to 60 sexual assaults. It is estimated that more than 10,000 women died as a result of these events, either directly due to sexual assaults received, complications from abortions, or suicide due to trauma. The testimonials collected over the years are as heartbreaking as they are shocking, so we warn sensitive viewers to be alert. I remember an abused German woman. She was lying naked and a grenade had been inserted into her crotch. Now I feel ashamed, but at that time I did not feel that way. Once some German women came to our battalion to see the commander, they were crying. When the doctor examined them, he saw that they had wounds there. They were completely torn. Her undergarments were completely stained with blood, says Ed Ratkina in the testimony collected by Svetlana Aleksevich in her famous book War's Unwomanly Face. This terrible story is not only terrifying because of its content, but because it was the rule rather than the exception. The Red Army Command was complacent about these aberrations, since there were no orders, but also no punishment and no desire to interrupt the chain of atrocities. Some inmates maintained that there was a grace period in which they were allowed to do anything and that the repression and punishment of the violations took months to arrive. It is said that a subordinate once dared to complain to Stalin, who replied, they are boys who covered thousands of kilometers fighting, risking her life. They had the right to have a good time with a woman. There are records of innumerable cases of sexual assaults committed by Soviet troops in the German capital, even when the subject was hidden in the years following the end of the war, and particularly even today it is a taboo subject in Russia. Aleksevich collects another testimony from a Soviet soldier, we were young, strong, and we had not been with a woman for four years. So we went hunting for Germans. Ten men abused one girl, since there were not too many women. They ran away and hid. So, if we found a girl of 12 or 13, we would grab her the same. If she screamed too much we would put a rag in her mouth. It seemed funny to us at the time. 
It's only now that I realize what we were doing. This disturbing experience was suffered by thousands of German women, since the state of post-war Germany was truly deplorable, and the victims often agreed to be subjected either not to be killed or in exchange for food or shelter. The Russian media tend to describe mass abuse as Western myths, although much of the data found has been extracted from the diary of a young Soviet soldier. Vladimir Gelfand was a young Ukrainian and Jewish lieutenant in the Red Army who secretly kept a war diary as it was prohibited by his superiors, who feared that this material would fall into enemy hands and criticism would leak into the Soviet command. In February 1945, Gelfand recounts how his comrades surrounded and annihilated battalions of German women fighters. The German women we captured said they were avenging their dead husbands, the lieutenant writes. We must destroy them without mercy. Our soldiers suggest stabbing them in their genitals, but I would just execute them. All these testimonies were collected in judicial documents, among which there is also evidence of suicides of 13-year-old girls who, after being victims of group attacks, ended up hanging from a beam in the house or, well, ingesting high doses of essence of vinegar. My 13-year-old niece was abused in the next room by 14 Russian soldiers. My wife was dragged to the barn and raped there too. The next morning, before leaving the farm, they did it again. Opening we found her mangled body in the barn, recounts Otto H., who dragged on his conscience that night on a farm in Friedberg, in Pomerania, for the rest of his life. These reports also tell the heartbreaking stories of how the Germans preferred to kill their daughters and themselves to avoid that fate. Seventy years after the end of World War II, women and girls raped by Allied or Soviet troops are still not spoken aloud in Germany. Neither the non-existent German administration nor the occupation troops kept records of the abuses and most of the documentary evidence has been found in the reports made by the church. The Archbishop of Munich and Freising asked priests to keep timely records on the activities of foreign armies in the region and their effects on the communities. These preserved records are truly terrifying and show that not only the Red Army was responsible for the crimes suffered by German citizens. Eight girls and women abused, some of them in the presence of their parents, wrote a parish priest in these reports requested by the church. Father Andreas Weingand, from a village north of Munich, wrote, The saddest thing about the passage of the Allied troops was the sexual attacks on three women, one married, one single, and a virgin girl of 16 and a half years. All committed by heavily intoxicated American soldiers. The youngest victim recorded in these documents was a seven-year-old girl who contracted a serious venereal disease and the oldest, a 69-year-old woman. Another custom of the troops was going out at night in search of defenseless women, as recounted by this chilling testimony. One night they knocked on the door and there were seven armed American soldiers. They demanded that food be prepared for them and then they sexually assaulted my grandmother and my mother. My cousin saw it all, but never talked about it. Neither did my mother and grandmother, relates Maximilian, who grew up without knowing that she was the daughter of one of those ruthless soldiers. I became suspicious when I wanted to go on a study trip to the US, my mother was completely destabilized and after several months and a lot of tension, my cousin told me what she had witnessed. It was terrifying. The fear always remains in your body, and you never get rid of it. The pain lessens over time, but the fear is always there. Unfortunately, these events were neither publicized nor condemned, due to the fact that silence and concealment were maintained for decades. The reasons were diverse, on the one hand the Soviet regime denied and dismissed the accusations and on the other hand the German women kept silent out of shame. Also in Germany there was another cause of silence, since the husbands of these women silenced them, they were the ones who did not want these terrible stories to spread. At a certain point, since these terrible attacks were so frequent, the women began to share their experiences with each other, since there were many who had suffered the same. In this way, the individual experiences of each one were transformed into a collective experience, in which the exceptions were those that had managed to avoid being violated. The figures that historians handle are chilling, since it is believed that there were around 2 million systematic rapes throughout Germany in that period, 
which have wanted to be erased from history. This was the terrible story gathered by the testimonies of what women suffered at the hands of the armies that managed to end the war, but committed crimes as serious as the Nazis. We thank you for reaching the end and we look forward to seeing you in the next installments of Military History.